So now it's time. It's about seven at my time here, and I am ready to welcome all of you to this webinar, this live event. I've just spotlighted myself, and I'll be sharing some screens as well during the session, but welcome to all of you. I think we're going to be pretty much uh, many people today, and I'm really looking forward to this. First of all, uh, how can you be in a better mood after listening to uh, higher power? And this is actually what it's all about today, higher power. How do we create higher power in conversations with our customers, our clients? And how do we actually create that power? It comes from us. So that means higher power is an amazing introduction to this because that power comes from me. We're not talking about speed. We're not talking about whether I'm fast or slow. We're talking about intensity and the way we communicate to the customers and not only to the customer, but to the customer's brain. So welcome so much, all of you. I would definitely recommend all of you to start having a pen and a paper ready. Why do we do that? Because the brain learns better when you write down and you draw. That means when I'm doing drawings, when I'm writing, my, my advice to you is write it down. Don't care about your drawings if they look good or look bad. But what happens is when you draw and when you write down, your memory recognizes better, your senses get more impression and it's lasting longer in your brain. And that means we have the basic of turning this from a knowledge to a skill and a behavior. So please take a pen and paper. I want to give you a couple of uh, exercises during this session. And I already know that some of you sitting out there are just showing that you're human beings because you could be scared that I would ask you a question directly. And that is actually one of the points that we're gonna uh, face today. The brain is always looking for threats and these threats, we don't like them. I think you all know that if you join some kind of a party and there's somebody you really want to speak to, it can be either a boy or a girl, or it could be a business connection that you really want to approach. Sometimes it's difficult to take these 10 steps and go and introduce yourself. It is not physically difficult, but it's mentally very difficult and all borders has to be crossed. How can that happen? The same situation actually, when you're in a meeting with a client or a customer, how can it be so difficult to ask for the order? Why is it so difficult to ask the customer if they want to buy? Because we are afraid of something and we'll come back to that. But just to start with, welcome to this session. In this session, we'll work especially with tools and knowledge about how to, how to influence the brain of yourself and of the customer. I'll just share my screen again because I have a little start here I want to show you. Uh, so here you have it. Then you stop these guys here. They are amazing. But let's look at two other amazing guys. I'd like to introduce shortly uh, which company I'm a part of. And I see that somebody already write in the chat and you're so welcome to put things in the chat and write comments or questions. If you want to do that, you're always welcome to do it. Please feel free to do that. But let's look at these two guys, these two tennis players, amazing tennis players. They actually symbolize why we call this company intense. Try to imagine that these two guys have to play a big tournament, the final in the tournament, and they're showing up here to play this amazing final. They are so to speak on the same level. They are so to speak in the same situation, in the same court, in the same, with the same rules, the same, the same materials, the same referees, everything is more or less the same. My crazy question is, who will win? I know you have your personal favorite maybe, and you'll say that guy will win. But my, my answer to you is, the guy who wins is the one who shows the highest degree of intensity in all he does. That means, how did he practice? How did he prepare? How did he get mental ready? And how is he ready to rumble the game when somebody hits him? Maybe he's down zero to two, and then he's already out of the game. He believes, or can he fight his way back? That is actually what we see is the big difference. The winner is the one who shows the highest degree of intensity. And then comes the crazy question. Could one of these guys lose to a rookie that has only started playing tennis as number 500 on the world ranking list? Yes, they could. How could that happen? 
because they didn't estimate him on a high level. And going into that game, they thought they could lose. Sorry, they thought they couldn't lose, but they did. This is the reason we call our company intense because we see that companies succeeding, they're not different than other companies. They have, so to speak, the same product. If you look at products, uh, if you look at different products, there are so many definitely doing the same product or service as you're doing. Why will you win? Because you show the biggest degree of intensity, passion, motivation, when you are trying to impact the client. And that is actually because intensity that transmits. That means if I can show the right degree of intensity, it transmits to the client. And what is happening now here, we're building trust, we're building hope, we're building motivation. So first, to learn to work with this, you need to learn to work with yourself. Today, we will give some common knowledge about this. That will definitely also inspire you how to motivate yourself and be in the right mood and right state of mind to win your games. Because when I stop sharing here, and I do now, I can ask, is somebody doing exactly the same product as you? Yes. Is somebody delivering more or less the same service? Sure. Is somebody doing it cheaper than you? Or is somebody doing it more expensive? For sure they are. Do you win all your games with the customers? No. Do you sometimes lose? Yes, unfortunately. And do you sometimes lose to somebody that actually don't, was not supposed to beat you? Do you somebody sometimes lose to somebody who should never win that client? You do. It's not because of the product and it's not because of the price. We like always to say it's the price. No, they could do something that you didn't do. And one of the things was they understood or by accident or incident, they were lucky to connect with the brain of the customer more than you did. So to learn this, I'll just shortly show what you will get today. What you get today is, first of all, we will try to make you understand how the brain works and how you control it. Control seems like a bad word. So we're not trying to manipulate negatively, but we are trying to actually reach access in the right way to our clients and customers so they'll get the best impression. And then of course, there'll be some tools and structures how to influence the brain and that way get better results. So we will start out in three steps. We'll talk about the brain. We have to know the manual of the brain in basics. And this is not like we are zooming in on a small city on a specific street. No, we take a look on the brain from the upside. That means we get a big perspective of the structure of the brain and how it works. Then we transform it down to behavior because the brain controls your behavior unless you take control back. The brain controls your behavior. So what we will do is we'll take a look at behavior, how actually to influence, and then we will give some tools. So today you'll be taught into these three thing, things here, basic understanding of the brain, very important theory which understand how to, how to work with that behavior and definitely how to get uh, access to tools. During the session, I'll also have a couple of giveaways and information and they will be in the chat if you need it. Uh, and I hope, uh, I see somebody's saying black boxes indeed on the screen. I hope you were, uh, you don't, okay, I'll just try to share it once again. And then, we, uh, yes, we do it again. I hope it's better now. Uh, so, uh, that's what we do now. I'll just stop sharing because I go back to my video. I hope you can see my video. Please write in the chat if you see my video because that is the most important part right now. Uh, and hopefully we got away with, yes, you see me now. That's great. So to understand the customer's brain, we need to understand the brain. And it's very important to tell you that when we talk about the brain, there are no differences whether you're from one part of the world or another part. No cultural differences. Of course, that could influence our behavior. But the brain is structured the same way. It, the brain it doesn't care about religion. It doesn't care about skin color. It doesn't care about culture and where you're born. The brain is actually more or less structured exactly the same way. That's interesting because this means it's a universal international tool that we know have this understanding. We can actually work with it. So first of all, we need to understand, and I ask you a question, why do we actually have a brain? Wow, why do we actually have a brain? 
There is only, unfortunately, only one reason. The brain should help us to survive. Surviving means, of course, in some situations physically, but in most situations, it actually means mentally. Uh, mentally, not physically, but mentally. Survival here means that I want to be a success. I want to be safe. I want to feel that I'm included. And we come back to that. So survival is a very huge part of the brain. And to do this, the brain is structured in a special way and it has its friends, all its guards. And all these guards are our senses, eyes, mouth, nose, ear, feeling the senses of the skin. All these senses are guards that send feedback to the brain. How is situation right now? If situation is as usual, or as I know it, the brain say, calm down and relax. If something is unusually, the brain will try to see if it's tried this before or not. If it tried it before, it find a tactic or strategy to survive. If not, it could actually burn down. I'll come back to that. And that's of course interesting to know because when you meet a customer, I know they're not afraid of you, but they could be afraid of some of the things that could happen when they do business with you. So we need to understand the brain is trying to survive and it's also trying to reduce consumption of energy. And the brain consumes 20% of our total energy when it's in balance. And I think we all know when you get out of balance, something bad happens or something special happens. You fall in love. You're about to buy a new house. You know that you have to move from your house. You have to start on a new school. You're about to start in a new job. It's not really dangerous, but your brain keeps a lot of thinking and it consumes a lot of energy. You get tired, not physically tired, but mentally tired. That's because the brain actually wants to survive and it wants to save energy. That's important to know because if you stress a customer too much, they consume more energy and you're not the only one trying to, uh, trying to get uh, somebody to, to spend energy on you. There are a lot of people that want uh, to, to think about things. They want them to spend energy. They are part of an internal project. They may be a manager. They may be also looking for new clients. There's so many things consuming energy from them. So when you come, you have to get access to the brain the right way, and you have to get their focus and their attention. That's important. If you don't get that, then it's a bigger problem for you than usually. So these two things are important to know. Then we need to know about the structure, the structure of the brain. Here we have the brain. I know this seems a little strange. This is the brain. We can divide it into three small sections or three sections. The first section is what we call the thinking brain. The thinking brain is also called neocortex. Neocortex is the biggest part of the brain. It is the part of the brain that can work rationally. It can think about solutions. It can evaluate, it can compare, it can think about new solutions in a rational manner. Already now I told you, rational thinking, we would all like to tell that we are rational. The latest scientists just showed that 100% of our decisions are either made 100% or influenced radically by our emotions. So that means the biggest part of our brain is actually the biggest problem we have because it's the thinking brain and the thinking brain also called system number two that also already indicates that the system number two is not first priority. That means system number two is the thinking brain. It's the slow part of the brain. That is also the part of the brain that you want to train when you train meditation or mindfulness. You want to train your attention span to stay alert, to stay aware, to stay present. The big problem is that the second part of the brain is what we call the emotional brain. Emotional means this is actually called the limbic system, and this is called system number one. System number one is the first part of the brain. That way, that's where you create all your experiences, your senses, I gather all this in your memory. You have all, all the things happening to you and you are very fast. 
You all know it. You go in a daily life. You spend no energy thinking about where to go, what to do. Everything is habits. That's one of the things that actually is very describing from system number one. It has a lot of habits. Habits are amazing routines, automatisms. They are amazing for us because we don't need to think. And not need to think means we save energy and it's more likely that we can survive. So here we're actually working with two systems. We have the thinking system that could actually conclude that you should change what you do today. We have the emotional system that actually mostly want to stay as it is now because then I feel easier, I feel more safe, I feel more light to go. And then we have the last part. We won't call it a system, but it is a very important system. It is called the auto brain. Auto brain means that this actually is what we call the unconscious part of the brain. We have the conscious part here. I'm very aware. If I pick up that pen, I can look at it. I can examine it. I can be aware. I can look at how I can work with it. I can think about what I want to write. Now I'm working in the conscious part of the brain. If I go to the more subconscious part of the brain, I go into the emotional part. The subconsciousness is definitely the one taking over control. And then we have the third part, the auto brain, the unconscious part. That's what happening, hopefully, while you've been here, your unconscious part has been working. You've been breathing, your, all your kidney, your stomach, your lungs, everything has been working, your blood is floating. You don't need to think about it. It's happening automatically. You will normally only think if something is wrong. That is good. I know you now think about your breathing. That's actually one of the things when you get stressed or nervous, your auto brain start breathing faster. That's why you can then change your awareness to this system and breathe slowly. Deep breath means that you get more air, you get calmed down. So when you're in a meeting and you get stressed, when you're in something where you're under pressure, take deep breath to get more air because you need air to your brain to calm down your system. But we come back to that a little later. So now we have these three systems. System number two, system number one, and the auto brain. The problem with the auto brain is that if pressure and stress get too high, then the auto brain will do only three things. That is actually also what's called a reptilian brain. It can fight, flight, or freeze. Flight mean that somebody in a meeting with you try to say, please, the meeting has ended now. I need to stop. I don't know what to do. Flight, go away. I need to flight from here. I'm very busy now. I have another meeting. Or oh, they could fight. They get arguments again. You're saying, you're not the only one. You're too expensive. I don't like your product. I don't like the way you do it. They might be affected to, for a fight reason. And then, of course, they could do what is called freeze. Uh, I know some of you probably found out sometimes that you ask a question, but nobody answers. Uh, actually, in a meeting, they don't answer you. Uh, you send an email, you hear nothing. Maybe they're considering how to escape, or they are in a bad balance between emotional and rational thinking, saying, in one way, I like this product. I think it's a good thing. I, I think we can benefit from it. But on the other hand, my big problem is, if it don't succeed, I'll be in trouble. And I know what I have today, and I might cancel my old supplier. I don't like that. So you see here is a conflict between reward and actually what scares us. Threat and reward is in a challenge. And we'll come back to that a little later because that's a very important thing to understand. So now we have the structure. And the, and the big issue is that uh, somebody's writing, writing a little about the, the right and the left part. That is another part because we talk here about the front part of the brain and the back part. And then we have the rational, uh, that's actually right, that you have normally, you can talk about more than two senders. You have actually eight senders in the brain and they're cross connected. But when we talk about the left and the right part, we're talking about that you're more creative or you're more into words, you're more systematic. That's a different part of this. This part is in all brains and, and all people has this part of the brain, the thinking brain. All people have the emotional part of the brain and then somebody can be more right-brained or left-brained. That's a different part, but we all have this part in the brain. And then this thinking brain, 
That's actually what differentiates us for the animals, the primals, because they don't have a thinking brain. They have a very strong emotional brain, a very strong limbic system based on routines, habits, emotions, feelings. And of course, they are very aware of what's happening for survival and saving energy. But we're in a situation where we can think, compare, and I've given a couple of examples because this we can really use. Three things we need to know now about the brain. First of all, we just talked about there is a hierarchy. This hierarchy means that this auto brain is the bus. In control, when the bus is not active, is emotional brain. And then on the third part, we have the thinking brain. This is the hierarchy. The hierarchy is definitely that the bus is the auto brain. Second in charge is the limbic system. And third is the rational. Now you can start writing down a question. How much do I actually communicate to the rational part? And what you will see is that a lot of your communication for marketing, a lot of your communication in sales, you communicate rational thinking. And it's very difficult because you want to approach emotions. Marketing has been great in that, you know, colors, words, pictures, because this part of the brain is actually more understanding in pictures and in, in, in pain. It's see what's going on. We come back to that. So we need to understand there's a hierarchy and there's a very close connection between think, feel, and act. That means if I start thinking, I get emotions and feelings, and then I can act or I can stop acting. And I think we all know, if I really sat down and think about something amazing, an amazing holiday, something terrible, something happened in the school, I was really so sad, or something today, our brain has a capability of capturing us. And sometimes we really believe, we believe it's right. So when we start thinking here, we build up more fear or more scariness, and then our action will be do nothing. That is actually what I'm so lucky to work a lot with sports people. We start to learn them to think positively, feel positively, and create a better basic for action, good actions instead of bad action. Our limitation is very often our thinking. The minute we start thinking more positively, we have a better approach. Try to imagine these two tennis players. They went into the field. One of them started thinking, I'll never win that game. I know I cannot beat him. It's impossible for me. He's in a bad circle and he will never get that impression that he will win. The other one saying, wow, I won four in a row. I beat him five times this year. I know I'm the best here. He's maybe not the best, but he feel he's the best. And very often when I work with salespeople, I see some of them. I was very short time ago, I was co-visiting with a sales guy. And then when we went to this meeting, I should give him feedback after that. And when we went to the meeting, I said, okay, are you ready for today? And then he said, when we drove into the parking lot, he said, oh no, I see my worst competitor has been here. How do you see that? I see the service guys there. And say, oh, what's the problem with that? He said, I never beat them. They're always here. They're so low on price. I know they always do. They dump their price to win. And I said, wow, this is an amazing beginning. You don't believe you can win. Why then play the game? On the other hand, you know they're here. You know why they're here? Because there is a need. They were not here if there were no need. That means you have an option to go there. There's a huge need that just caught them. Now you have to save your customer from your enemy, <laughs> the competitor. So you see the mindset here is so important. How do I approach this? Do I approach it with a narrowed mindset or an open mindset? So this is the first things we need to know. Hierarchy, connection between think, feel, and act. And then the good thing is the brain can be trained. Trained mean we can practice and develop. I'd like to give you a small exercise. And if you want to follow, please do this. Some of you have probably done it before. This show how amazing the brain is. Just put up your fingers and fold your hands, please. And when you fold these hands, just look at my hands, you fold them, and then you just change them one single level. I know that most of you will feel this is strange. This is or This is not how it used to be. Then go back to normal. Now you feel this is more normal. And then you can do this like 10 times. Just change 10 times. And then suddenly when I count down now, four, three, two, one, stop. And then stop. 
what you will see now is because you trained and you got used to it, it feels not normal, but it feels better. That's what happened with your way of approaching sales. You have been communicating the same way for years. You've learned a style. And now I want you to change. That means I need you to learn a new method. And that means it calls for practice. It calls for change. And change will only happen if you practice and train. So that means if I want to learn you to be a better closer, or if I want to learn you to be better in understanding clients, you need to practice. If you don't want to practice, you don't need to be here today. Then just cut off because there's no reason for that. That's why you look at the tennis players. They train and practice every day. And you can ask yourself the question, how often do I practice? And that's very important because what I'll do now, I really hope that my, my PowerPoint can be shared with you. I'll just uh, start it again. And then hopefully you will see it uh, in a minute. Yes. I'll just put this away here. I hope that you can uh, see my screen. Please uh, put a yes if you see my screen with the brain behavior and the tools. Uh, yes, you do. Perfect. Thank you so much. So what we look about now is that we'll give you some example of how the brain works. I put up a picture here. I don't know if I'm proud about it, but anyway, I put up a picture. What happens here is that immediately you get emotions. Either you like this guy or you don't. I think I know what happened mostly. You probably don't like him that much. What happened here is that your system, number one, your emotional brain immediately concluded, boom, boom. It went so fast. So here we have an example of the first part of the brain. That could be your product. That could be anything else. The funny thing is, if I start asking you questions, I know you maybe don't like him, but can you tell me, he did some good actions concerning the system, the tax system. What did he actually do? Do you know how he actually worked, worked to get more economic strongness in the US economy? Now we start talking to the rational part of the brain. I want to make you think because we all judge immediately. We don't even know this guy. We only read in the media. Not very impressive what he read, not very symp sympathetic. But if we stop and we think nearly 50% of the country wanted him, he must have done something. Otherwise, 49% are crazy. So I don't sympathize with him. But I think seeing the picture is interesting and asking the next couple of questions, did he actually do something? And why did he actually get elected the first time and not the second? That's interesting to understand. The same with your clients. If you tell them about a product, some of them say, no, we don't use that. And then you can just take your product and leave or you can ask questions to be curious. So instead of presenting product, start understanding. And I'll show you another example here, Paris. Some of you will probably say, wow, I love Paris. It's the most amazing thing I like. And then secondly, when I ask you a deeper question, great, you like Paris. Can you tell me the 10 best restaurants you've been to? Maybe you don't even remember. Maybe you don't know because what actually happened here is that you might have a feeling that I was there. It was amazing, but I have no specific to tell you. So what we talk about here is that we're actually talking about two levels of communication. Level number one, the superficial uh, communication, talking between two emotional brains, and then the rational thinking, because we want to get a deeper interaction with our clients. That's why we talk about first level questions is, how do you feel about? And second level is, please be more specific. What are the best things? And that's why we have to learn to communicate and work with our questioning technique it doesn't need to be good. It needs to be excellent. And I can ask you again a question. How often do you train and practice your questioning technique? You should at least five minutes every day, just train and practice how you question people because that's your most important tool to connect to them and influence them. Secondly, I'll just give you a quick example here. This is very interesting because if I put this up, you immediately answer, and I know you answer four, of course, yes, because your emotional brain, your system number two is very fast. The second one, it's not very difficult, but you cannot just say four. 
you need now to multiply these. You need to calculate, even maybe take your calculator or your Excel sheet or whatever. You need to, you need to do more to get the result. That means it calls for system number two. It calls for more interaction. And now we have the problem. Our energy, we talked about it. We have only like 10% of our awaiting time to spend thinking. That means if we think and work more in the system number two than 10% in a day, we get tired. And then we go directly to easy decisions made in system number one. Your problem is when you arrive in a meeting with a client, you don't know if they have more energy left in system number two. So you need to catch them in system number one and speak with them in system number two and then get integrated with them and then challenge them. That's what we need to do. And that's why we need to be so strong in the questioning technique. Just one last example of how the brain works. I'll show you some words here. And then by yourself, please mention all these high for yourself, say it out loud uh, and don't say the word, say the color of the word, meaning red, white, green, blue, yellow, green, red, brown, white, blue. That's pretty easy. So let's change a little. Still remember, don't say the word, say the color of the word. So we change it now. And this is the next one. Here it is. Now we have to say the color, white, green, red, white, blue. So what's happening now is we challenge the brain because it's no more easy. Before there was a connection between word, color, now we separated it and the brain has to work harder to understand what to do. So now we're really challenged in this situation because the brain jumps to easy conclusion and say red because it sees the word red but it's actually white. And that's just a short summarize about the systems. We have the system number one, the fast working, learned by heart, habits, all the patterns we know about, getting stronger and stronger every time we do something. And then system number two, that's the more learning system, the planning a project, acquiring new customers, sticking to a diet. It's so interesting, personally, how can it be that difficult to stick to a diet? You get a plan for what to eat and how to exercise. It's not difficult. The difficult part is that you have to get it integrated in your habits. So you don't talk about a diet, we talk about a lifestyle instead. That is the important part. And that's actually what we need to understand about this. So I'll just jump sharing here because we now need to look into how we actually do this. Because one of the most important communication tools we have here is a very simple tool. I'll give you an example now from one of my visits to Spain. I went to Mallorca, the Balearic uh, island, and uh, at that island, I went uh, on a four-day vacation, and I went to. Uh, I wanted to go uh, cycling. Uh, I'm I'm cycling. I'm a little biker. I like to cycle, not that much, but we wanted to go, my wife and I. So what happened here was there was only one shop in that city renting out bikes. We went there, and when. When we went there and somebody's asking if I'll share the power ones, yes, surely I will do that uh, later on, they will get them. So what happened here was that I went to that shop to rent a bike. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't speak Spanish, but the girl there was a blonde hair, so probably she was European like me. I didn't know actually where she was from. So I went in, in English, I said to her, I want to rent a bike. And she just gave me the price list and said, yeah, here, you can look at these here. I said, no, no, I'm not looking at the price. I need to know what bike I'm looking for because my wife don't like, she don't like a, a road bike, a racer bike. She wants more like a more stable bike. And she said, okay, but you can see on the price list the different bikes we have. And I said, no, no, no I need your help. And then I asked her a question. Sorry, are, are you uh, born in Europe or Nordic? And she said, yeah, I'm Danish. And I said, well, I'm Danish as well. So what happened now is we speak the same language. It should be easy but it wasn't. So I said to her, then please help me. I need to find out what kind of bike I should rent from you. And she said, okay, we have different types. Yeah, I see that, I said, but I'm looking, should I take a city bike, a speed bike or mountain bike? And she said, they're all there, you can go and see them. I said, yeah, I can see they're there, but can you show me the difference? 
And then she said, I have I only one thing to say to you. The difference is the wheels. And then I looked at her and said, what? The wheels? I can see that. Some are bigger, some are wider, some are smaller, some are thinner. What, 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 does, what sense does it make? And then she said, oh, oh, I see what you mean. Where are you biking? Yeah, we're biking out here. I said, yeah, but are you going into the forest in the, in the wildlife? No, 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 no. We only bike on the road. Okay, then you definitely need to go with a speed bike because the speed bike has smaller wheels. So it will go faster, it will go more speedful and you consume less energy. And I said, thank you. Thank you for helping me making a choice. So what is the problem here is when we need to get people, give people some knowledge, we need to help them to make decisions. To make decisions, we need to give that knowledge in a specific way. First of all, we need to find out if we speak the same language. We need to give some what. The problem with what is that if I ask you, how many, if I ask you, we're gonna travel, how many kilometers are we gonna travel? You have no possibility to answer me. Some of you will imagine 10 kilometers, some a thousand, but that's because we're not talking about what is traveling. Is it by plane, by bike, by car, by train? Because when we get more information on the what level, then we can get more aligned. That means we need to speak when, when the client said, our system needs to be fast. Oh, you can be sure our system is fast. What is fast? That is a very important thing to clear out because a lot of mistakes between seller and buyer is done by not understanding each other. And the minute I get a feeling that you don't understand me, my system alerts the limbic system and said, be careful now, you're going to buy a product that is not the right one. So you need to be clear to understand when a client say it needs to be fast. You sure, I like to understand what is fast. And then I need also to understand why do you need it to be fast? What is it you want to gain? And what is it you want to avoid from the system being fast? That is a very important part. Understand the what and then start understanding the why because the why is the motivation. The why is the reason to buy or not to buy. If I see the why, and especially if I see what is called the W I F M, this is a radio station. That radio station, W I F M, we all tune into that immediately in any situation. It's called W I F M because it stands for what's in it for me. And you have to understand there's only one thing driving your customer. That's what's in it for me, him or her. They think about this. So you need to understand same language, same words, same understanding, and then speak about what can you gain and what can you avoid? What is your pain? What is your possibilities? And the minute we start doing that, a lot of salespeople want to show the client that here is a huge bag of gold. Here's a huge bag of opportunities. You can save money, you can save time, you can get all this. But there is one problem. We all want to impress that our system is the fastest, the best working, and we tell them all this, so it's to say, shit. The big problem is, remember, the brain wants to ensure that we survive. So it will doubt. It will doubt all the gain and the, 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 what you can get from it. It all starts saying, we only need to find out what is your problem, what is your pain here, and not start just overwhelming them with all this gold and money. Because if you start doing that, you lose your trust. So what you do is you listen, you understand, and then you frame together with them what is it they want to gain and avoid. And then you can start saying, okay, I can help you. This is basic sales theory, but how often do you practice? Going back to the tennis players, they practice every day. They play tournaments and practice to get a better backhand or front hand. They practice the serve, they practice all the time. 
How often do you practice basic sales skills, communication skills, understanding people, asking level one and level two questions? We don't because I'm a born salesman. Stop that stupid bullshit because nobody's a born salesman. We all need to practice. Some has better conditions to be a salesman. So what we need to learn is I need to understand what. That is what we speak about. I need to frame why. And then the big problem is how often did somebody tell you that you can have a big price by participating in a lottery or something else? How often did somebody tell you that you can have a big asset, but you didn't take it? Why didn't you try? Because there was one huge mistake. You couldn't see how to win. How to win is, I can promise you one million, but your brain will say, be careful, he'll cheat you. You will feel bad, or at least he will, when, if he wants to give you a million, he wants something back. When I'm later on participating, sorry, uh, telling you that you can actually get a free workshop with me, five of you, if you want, you will get a form a little later. Some of you are saying, wow, what does he demand? I don't demand anything, but I demand something. I demand that you apply and then you definitely participate in the workshop, meaning that you want to learn. And then I hope I can build some trust, get to know you and see if I can work with you in the future. Am I selling? No. The minute you stop selling, you start selling. So I give away, but I want to understand you because I want to start selling to you, but I cannot put any pressure. That is the difference here. And if you don't know how to do, then sometimes what I see is, we, if we don't know how to do things, our brain starts saying, this is too difficult, close down. So you need to make it possible by understanding what and showing how, because if you don't know how to do, it's all on guessing. And a lot of salespeople, they don't have enough time to show how this can actually be, be achieved. And if you want to avoid and, and gain, achieve or avoid, then you definitely need to show them the money, but definitely also show them how they can get them. If they don't understand the solution, if they don't feel good about the solution, then it's a problem. And remember a lot of them, they have to do what is called a second sale because they need to go to their, to their uh, people internally in the company. They need to go and sell it again. They need to go and present it. They need to present the solution, what it is, what we can get, why we should do it, and how it's gonna affect this. That means every company, if they make decision from buying from one of you or two of you, they will prioritize saying no to another one. Saying no to another one means that I go with you, that could be risky. If it's risky, I will not do it if it's too risky. If I can see risk is lower, I'll probably do it. So here we have an example of the first way to communicate is to make sure that the client understands what I'm saying, why I said, and how to do. And then we can always talk about when and who does it. One of the most simple communication tools, but I still train people after 10 years of training, we still start practicing this one because like the tennis players, they need to practice. And then of course, I'll show you another example from the trip to Mallorca. We're not finished with that girl because I decided then to go with the speed bike. And then what happened was very interesting. Then she said to me, you want also to rent a helmet? And I said, no, I don't need. Why did I say? Because a man with a bike helmet doesn't look that good, right? And I saw no reason for that. I saw no why for doing that. But honestly, when I came back after biking the most of the day, I would have hoped she tried to sell to me why I should have a helmet. And she could have done that very easy. If she had asked me a couple of questions, did you ever bike in New Yorker? No, I did not. Do you know anything about the roads? Because I can tell you in this side of the road, there were two meter down like mountains. If I went down there by an accident, I would hit my head. And the, the cars are driving, the lawyers and the vans are driving so close to you. But she didn't frame that. She didn't get me that picture in my mind saying, you need a helmet. And if she did that and said, helmet is only 10 euros, you want that. She sold me two helmets. It's better for me and it's definitely better for her. But she just presented the product. You want a helmet? No, 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 I don't need. And then it stopped. Mindset wise, 
it's a very bad customer service not to sell me a helmet, not to explain me uh, how it is to, to bike on Mallorca. And you can go the same situation in a lot of companies. You sell your machine, you don't sell the service. You sell some part, you don't sell all of it. You have to understand that selling is a service because it's also a way of calming down the brain of the client. So those of you interested in getting a workshop, my uh, assistant here, Alvin, will just share in the chat a form. And if you uh, go to that form, you have an option. Five of you will get a workshop of 45 minutes where we speak deeper into your company and how you can actually work with this. So five lucky participants will get that one. And then, yeah, be afraid because these 45 minutes are gonna be threatening and really scary. So uh, your brain, it's okay. Some of you probably think, well, oh, I don't know if I want, I'm never lucky. No, but uh, if you're lucky, then get ready for a scary moment because I'll challenge you a little when we, when we meet. Okay, that is one part. We need to understand the what, the why, and the how. The second part we need to understand is that the brain has a threat and reward system. Threat and reward mean that it's always looking for these threats and it really likes to get rewards. What we're talking about here is that very often salespeople tell me that sales is all about chemistry. Okay, then tell me please, what is chemistry? Uh, did you have the chemistry with the with guy you met? Did you have the connection? Okay, tell me then, what is your algorithm for chemistry? I can tell you now what's happening because there are three parts of the brain. First part is that the brain has a threat system and every time I'm threatened, my brain releases especially stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. Adrenaline is okay because it makes us go faster and fight. It's not good for us for a longer period because then we get stressed. It also releases cortisol, which is directly a stress hormone and it makes us worry. It makes us have, uh, getting bad feelings. Too much cortisol, we make no decision. To avoid that, we'll come back to that in a minute. Second, the good thing is that the brain is also rewarded. Rewarded with good things, and that is endorphins, dopamines. Endorphins and dopamines we get when we do something. I know that when we exercise or eat, we get dopamines, endorphins, and also if you have a to-do list and you check all these to-dos like check, 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 what happening now, it releases endorphins and dopamines. So we can do that together with the client, make an agenda, check the check boxes. Now we went through this, now we went through this. The brain will release endorphins and dopamines it will be calmed down also when it happened the following. Because we have the threat, adrenaline and cortisol. We have the motivation, the reward of endorphins and dopamine. And then we have the calming part of the brain. The calming part is oxytocin, serotonin. What happening here is when I feel connected to somebody, when I feel related, then it releases oxytocin. When we are together, that's why when you're there and you want to kick out a competitor, some will be afraid of saying to the competitor, go. They won't be happy to stop and cancel the contract. The reason is that they really feel that they have to cut a connection. And we don't like to cut that connection because then maybe I'll be threatened a little by somebody asking me questions. You're stopping now after 10 years? Why are you stopping? What mistake did we do? What is the reason? What will happen with the new supplier? They ask us silly questions and we don't like them. So it's easier to say no to you and stick to the old solution, even if it's not the best solution. So here we have a situation where if you can connect more on the same pitch, on the same field, get common goals, get closer connected to them, what will happen now is they release this oxytocin. So if you can speak more about we, us, speak more about a common project, but you start understanding the client, then you get more into understanding together. And the good thing is when you start using words as we, we together, you communicate to the emotional part of the brain. If you too often say me, yes, I will do it. Then you communicate much more that I'm here and you're here. And then you're ready for a fight. We must be ready to understand that we do it together. We, but we cannot just say it, we need to show it. So on papers, we can draw that we are together. We can draw a common project. This is a very important part because 
I told you that the brain, there is a connection between thinking, feeling and act. So what we put up here is thinking as the head, feeling as the heart, acting as the hand. And we have here the green track and here we have what is called the black track. The black track has one big problem. It starts with bad thinking. Bad thinking means bad emotions, bad action. And here we have result. Result here gets better. Result here get worse. That problem is endorphins, dopamines, oxytocin, serotonin is released here and creates better results. Adrenaline and cortisol is released here and creates wealth results. Problem is that scientists show that one thought of negativity has to be balanced at approximately four to five positive thoughts. And if you get too many positive thoughts, you lose your ability of, of, of doing the right and wrong and you lose, you just do by, because you're caught by emotions. So we need to understand when we communicate with the client, we need to challenge sometimes on the black track. That's what we do when they, we ask them, the solution you have today, what will happen if it, isn't, if it isn't constructed fairly for the future? What will happen if your this present machine will break down? How many hours will you be laying down in manufacturing? Or what will happen if service is not here within one hour? Then we're trying to actually show them what is their pain. But don't keep anybody in pain because if you keep them in pain, they want to uh, they want to escape. So what you have to do is you need to speak about the pain and then shift the lane to speak about how they can gain from it. So that means if you're sure service is done faster, your machine will be up and running within one hour. What will that, what kind of customer service will that create for your company? What position will that put you in in the market? So we need to understand that we can communicate to both these two, but we need to swift it to talk about what they can gain. So here we talk about pains and here we talk about gains. And what you want to do is you want to change pains to gains. And the minute you can do that, you get more positive thinking. And the minute you can show them how to do, you get no frustration. That's why we talked about the what, the why, and the how before, because that's a way to do it. That's the way you communicate actually what's happening. Because what happens here is, and I'll now go to my screen again and share uh, my PowerPoint. We talked about the what, the why, and the how. And then we go into the second level here, the green track. That is how you influence people to think positive, act, uh, feel positive, and act positive. That you do by touching the pains, but swifting to the lane of the positivity and asking questions. You don't tell them, you ask them. If you imagine what I said before, I don't tell them if your service is down, your customer will be dissatisfied. No, I ask a question. What will happen to your customer service if it's down for one hour? How will your customers react? What will be their feeling? How will, what will they do then if they cannot get in contact with you? You see the difference between telling and asking. When I ask, I want them to answer. When they answer, you get another situation. So that's why you should definitely practice your questioning technique and you shouldn't be telling. And then we talk about pictures. Try to, 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 to frame pictures for your clients so they actually see what will happen if everybody's stuck with the phones, if they're down, they cannot get service. What will happen? Try to imagine there's a line of customers coming up to your company. They're not able to get in contact. Please speak in these kind of metaphors, speak in pictures because pictures, they frame emotions. So that's why we need to understand that there is this threat system. And shortly to understand what is the threat system. It's about five drivers for threat and reward. Status is my position and the status and position. Every time you approach a client, his or her position can be threatened. They want to have a strong position to make decisions. They want to be safe. And that's why certainty is so important. A lot of you will see that this actually symbolizes a lot with good old needs from Maslow, but this is the drivers in the brain. We're driven by status. We don't want to lose it. 
We're driven by uncertainty. We want to be sure what's going on. That's why you need to communicate how to do. Autonomy means that I want to make decisions. You shouldn't do it for me. Leave it to them. Relatedness means that I feel that we are connected. That's why it's sometimes different, difficult to, to get a, a supplier away because they're related. If they're not the best, there's a relation. You probably all have friends that they're not your best friend, but they are best friend. You're still related, you see them, but you don't get anything good, but you cannot disconnect. And then fairness. That's one of the points. If I find out that you sold the same solution to me, more expensive than my neighbor, I get, I get a feeling of unfairness. And fairness is not great. So that's what you need to understand. I'll in a later event, I'll talk more about this. We can also speak about it in the workshop that how you actually work with this. So here we're back to the basic now. You need to understand to persuade people, you need to talk about pain. Don't get stuck in pain. Then you need to claim how you do the solution. That's actually what you're talking about. Pains are here. Make them feel big. Claim how you will do it. Because the minute you claim and show how your solution is, the pain will leave them. And then show them the gain, what your solution can give, give them a gain. But do it the way. Start the pain. Show how you claim it, how you solve it. Show them the gain, what they can benefit. And all the way you need to speak to the brain because the brain is the master. And what does this mean? That means you need to speak. You need to understand that you speak to the system number two and number one. That means if you repeat your message, if you use the same words as the client, then you're sure to connect more. You get it easier from thinking into emotions and that's your job. If it's too much in the other one, then it's a big problem. So actually what we talk about here is, there's a lot of tools we can use. The most important tool is to understand when you communicate, do I speak superficially to thinking brain or do, we, do I dig deeper into the emotional brain? Can I ask several second level questions? Meaning, as I said to you with Mr. Trump, uh, do you like him or not? I hate him. That's okay. Tell me a little about what is the reason you hate him? How much do you actually know about him? If I present a solution, do you know a solution? Yes, yes, I know it. Okay, tell me a little about what you heard about it. Did you ever test it? If you tested, what kind of results did you get? I need to ask more second level questions. And then I need to go into pictures. You probably still remember the, the lady from Mallorca with the blonde hair who was a Dane because I told you a story. Stories, they speak to senses and emotions. You need to learn to do that. Storytelling is an important tool. And then you need to work all the time with practice and training. That's also why, and somebody will maybe ask, are you selling now? Yes, but I'm also offering you an opportunity. We will now in January in Dubai and UAE start uh, the first group of what is called EGN, Executive Group Network. It will be a group of sales and marketing people in a group, in a peer group, where maximum of 20 people six times a year meet for a, whole, a half day to work with, how can I improve our company and my way of doing sales and marketing? That group will be shown to you. If you want your interest, uh, you can just, uh, you've got a form from Alvin in the chat. If you sign up there, we will come back to you with a special offer when we start the group in January, because we are, we know that to improve, you need to train, you need to go to the fitness center. And if any of you want to connect to me, connect on LinkedIn, or you can send me an email as well. Alvin can maybe write my email uh, in the chat. It's maw at intense.com. You're always allowed to contact me. And uh, please just promise me one thing. You have to start thinking more and doing less. Thinking more and doing less. Because when you do, you go directly to your habits. Habits are great, but they don't make us excellent. If we want to be excellent, we need to think more. So actually what I want to, to do is start thinking and stop doing. A lot of sales people, they just do, but they have to think more. And if we think more, we have to understand the brain of the customer and that way, what will happen is that you get better results. You do it because you connect better to your clients. 
you communicate to the right part of the brain, you show them the pain, you show them the gain, and how you will solve it, you use what, why, and how. I really hope that you all enjoyed this session. And then remember, I started playing Coldplay with higher power. Coldplay with higher power created emotions. And if I played it again, you'll recognize this and you'll feel good feelings. That's why we have so many emotions when we have ex experiences all around the world. The, the hour has left now. I hope you all got some good stuff. We will share the, the slides with you and we will definitely also share a recording. And I hope to see some of you in the workshop or I hope to see some of you if you join. And when you join, that's a good example of how we use the words. If it's not likely, but when, it's definitely likely. Small words, that's how you be excellent. So when you join the group, I'm looking forward to help you to practice and be excellent. Have an amazing day out there. Take care.